September 11, 2023, 6.08 p.m., calling the meeting to order. Okay. Great. First thing on the agenda is to look over the, the, the minutes. Did anybody get the latest of all the minutes? <laughs> I did, and I approve, or so move. Okay. Second on that? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Um, citizen, but I don't think there's any citizens here. Anything on your end? No. no. Okay. All right. Moving on. Okay. A is flu clinics. Do we want to handle one each one individually, Jim? I'll just give a quick overview. So today okay. marks our first day of uh, flu vaccination season. Yay. Uh, we're doing <laughs> a small one, uh, friends and family. Um, the, the clinics are loaded onto the Tritown site under the Southern Berkshire Collaborative. Uh, we have quite a few of them. Um, Lennox Community Center, which will be Thursday, this Thursday from 10 to 1. Mm. Another one in Lennox. Where, where in Lennox? Down the high school at the end uh, of the month. Uh, the, the middle and high school on Wednesday, 927, 3 yep. to 6. And then we'll do a series of those clinics and, you know, obviously we'll do some mop up at the end. Right now we have the regular flu, the state supply in the high dose. Um, we did put an order for some egg free doses, but they, they haven't come in yet. They're working their way through. We don't have any COVID vaccines yet, um, but once they become approved and they get into the queue, we'll start to add those to the flu clinic list mm -hmm. um, as they come in. Um, they are, we, we do have to privately purchase COVID vaccines. Um, mm. You know, they do sell them in single dose, but they also sell them in multi-dose. So, multi so we'll have to buy some multi-dose. We may not get those until late September, October-ish. And okay. so, and it's very, they're very expensive. They're like a hundred something bucks per dose. And so, yeah, so, you know, we're going to put a budget to the side. Uh, the good news is, you know, after we're into year two of the vaccine program, the, the, the collaborative has generated a pretty, I want to say substantial amount of revenue to purchase vaccines, but it's a it's a healthy number, so we can actually go out and purchase COVID vaccines. And one of the things I was concerned about is buying too much, because mm -hmm. you know, although the the numbers are ticking up a, li a little bit, you know, it's not completely out of control. I I didn't want to overshoot and buy private purchase COVID vaccines and then not give mm -hmm. them to anybody. But the vendor uh, Pfizer basically said we can order and you know, small increments. And, and if we need more, it's only like a two day turnaround time. And so um, as Jill and Jane and the group are starting uh, vaccines, they're going to kind of uh, engage the, those coming to the regular flu clinics to see if they're interested okay. in COVID shots. Mm -hmm. And we have access to everyone's information, including emails, phone numbers and stuff. So as we kind of come to fruition with the COVID accessibility shots, we'll we'll kind of clean that up and get those out there uh, to the community. Jim, do um, we bill for those? Yeah, so we we build a medic, we build the insurance company for insurance all that. Company. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's free to it's free to the community, but we do ask them to put their insurance information in there. Then we okay. we go through Commonwealth Medicine. In the, on the back end, they do all the billing to mm -hmm. private insurance, Medicare, and all that stuff. If um, someone doesn't have insurance, do they have to pay privately? No, no, no. we won't. We will not turn anyone away. We try. We mm -hmm. try to. It, 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 we we also have state supply vaccine as well. If mm -hmm. someone shows up theoretically with no insurance, mm -hmm. um, we will still offer them the, the shots and whatnot, and then we'll work with them to get them to the right resources to hopefully get insurance, but we will not turn anybody away. Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did send out fiscal 23, which was April to June uh, communicable disease report. Mm -hmm. uh, Lennox specific, we, you know, this is from April to June, 2023. Um, we had 
24 COVID cases. We had two latent TB cases, which are just referred to the TB program. Um, three Lyme disease, one Hep C, three Campylobacteri, and um, one neurovirus case. So it kept Joe kind of busy on that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, the old, one other update I had, this is recently, we actually had to issue a notice to vacate order. Yeah, yeah. I included Diane on for an apartment in the Dale, you know, the old um, Lenox Hill building there. It's that multi- It's that school. It used to be the school. Yeah, yeah. The multi so we um, did a joint inspection with building, fire, uh, and, and us, and we did find a, a, an illegal unit that was being rented out that has no heat, no secondary means of um, egress, very, very, very small square footage apartment that didn't even meet the state standards on cool. square footage. And it's a young couple, but we're, we gave them the, we, we connected them with resources to, okay. you know, figure, figure all that out. Um, Code everything else come everything else come in the Dale though with the uh, um, but it's never come um uh, we you know we did dismiss the case on the Kohlenberger property oh, with okay. the manure um which was we did we did dismiss in court and they they signed uh, documents stating that they were going to manage the manure in, 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 to a way that wasn't going to create public health and safety and ironically, we got a complaint today about manure order in the, oh. in the house again. So I gotta, I gotta take a look at that. Um, Do you follow up on any of these complaints? So say you settled this, would you normally like swing by occasionally once a month or what? Okay. Yeah, we we try to. I mean, there's a series of things going on in our community that I'm always when I'm grabbing my Starbucks coffee, I make my rounds. Okay. You know, you you can't. You can't illegally walk on someone's property, especially with, with not an open violation case. But I, I'll, I if if the neighbors are because they they promised us that they were going to start taking the manure off site, which we asked them to put 50 feet, 50 yards from any property line. Mm. I can't make them remove the manure because they're they have a right. Mm. To, it's, it's a farm mm. thing and whatnot. But I'll. I'll drive by and see what's going on over there. Okay. But outside of that, it's been we had a relatively pretty pretty good summer. You know, we're getting ready to crank up for um, Apple Squeeze, Founders Day, and, and that kind of stuff. The Household Hazards Waste Collection is October fourteenth, yes. uh, nine yep. to one in Great Barrington. If you go, to, people go to the Tritown site; they can register. Um, yeah. Any questions on flu clinics, reporting, inspections? No. no. Okay. Yeah. One, one of the things I'll, I'll bring, I'm going to bring up at the full Tritown meeting is you know, we are looking into the possibility of expanding our vaccination program at some point. We, you know, there, we, we have been getting calls for RSV vaccines mm. But we were told uh, through our billing group that we deal with, they don't they don't do billing and reimbursements for Medicare Part D, and oh. you had to get a certain prescription. So we're not going to do RSV. But I, we're we're also getting calls on shingles vac vaccine. So we're going to look at that as things settle down. And and for those that have any ideas about you know vaccines that we could utilize assuming that we you know we can get the the reimbursements for that you know because we have to pay out of pocket for those kind of vaccines mm -hmm. and whatnot you know be you know we should have that conversation i know i know pneumococcal comes up quite a bit you know we have an aging population but we're, we're, come, we're trying to come up with different ideas on how to expand our public health nursing program as we as we kind of move along all right Next on the agenda is the opioid settlement update. Anything yeah, else? I don't really have anything. So this board, if you recall, we endorsed a letter yep. that was sent to the select board, which Diane and I went to. Um, I think, no, I don't know if you, 
Did you go to that meeting, Joe? I was there too. Yeah, yeah you did. Hmm? Yeah. I don't know how I, I can't remember what I did yesterday, let alone in May. But the Lennox Select Board overwhelmingly endorsed sending all of their opioid settlement funds to the Rural Recovery Center. Has that physically happened yet? I don't know because there's all this like language on accounting and how the process of actually yeah. getting those resources to them. Uh, you know, Stockbridge approved it. Lee approved it as well. And I think most of all South County approved that. But I think there's the specific language outside of our wheelhouse that they got to sort that out. But I'll, before our next meeting, I'll follow up and see if any dollars actually went there. Okay. And we'll, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I, I know it's a quick Lennox meeting, but we had to jump on a Tritown meeting for six. But is there any anything you want to discuss while we're here, Lennox specific? Yep. Well, that I'm going away, guys. Um, so um, guess who's in charge? Where are you? <laughs> John? Yeah, I do. You're going to be um, you're going to be the acting chair for the three okay. and a half weeks I'm gone. What um, dates again, Diane? We leave next Monday, the 18th. OK. And coming back late Friday night, the 13th of October. OK. So it'll be until the, the 14th, really. Right. Um, um, there there will probably be I, I we may need to call a meeting sometime in October on something, but I'm not sure. Um, um, if anybody's got any thoughts after the Tritown meeting about feedback on the, um, transportation routes that may pertain to Lennox in particular, Jim would, um, appreciate you sending any of your thoughts to him and he can construct a letter that would go into the public record on um, some thoughts on the transportation of the PCBs as they get worked through. Does that make sense, Jim? Yeah, it does. I mean, we can't get into detail and discussion yep. right here because it's not actually on the agenda. But, yep. you know, there, at some point, there's going, the plan's going to be, we're going to get a little bit deeper into this at six, but, you, you know, there'll be, a, I think it's really important that, each board of health submit some type of response because um, that may be our only opportunity from the board of health perspective to submit anything. Um, you know, if they release the plan with a public comment period and if that window closes and then this board has concerns, whether it's air quality, safety, health, you may not have an opportunity to present anything. So I think it would just, so think about that kind of idea in the back of your minds. If, you know, even if you just send me some of your quick ideas, I'll inventory those and won't hit, I won't submit them until we're ready. It's just, if you have some initial thoughts or ideas, just over overall, think about that. Okay. Do you, you think know. we should have uh, a meeting then in October sometime to discuss this, putting it on the agenda? I would think yeah. so, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll Noel, have to... Noel, do you have a question? Yeah. I um, I was just a little uh, uncertain as to the breadth of involvement of the Board of Health in, in coming up with ideas or concerns. Uh, your comments now are sort of seem to be uh, directed toward what routes or uh, what alternative routes might be in, uh, raised. Um, the, the questions also about um, the the physical handling of uh, contaminated soils. Uh, what sort of things uh, ought to be included in in uh, uh, recommendations for uh, how how to how to approach packaging, if you will, in the uh, dump trucks. For um, I, I, I have questions which probably have been asked along the line, but um, I was in my thinking, I was 
leaning more toward um, not the roots, but rather the sort of the mechanistic, you know, how do you get the stuff dumped into the dump truck? Is it dewatered before? Mm -hmm. uh, is it dewatered at the UDF? Those, those sorts of issues. Um, no, those are fine issues to bring up. Not no, just not I, just I think, the physical route, but I think everything pertaining to it is. Yeah, I I totally agree. I, there's a lot to learn. I I don't want to cut this conversation short, but I we do yeah. have to jump on to the six o'clock meeting, sure. and I and I think that will be a good platform to have a discussion because we have an agenda specific to the discussion yeah. on transportation, and I absolutely mm -hmm. agree with you. There's a lot of things that we need to learn. Mm -hmm. Diane, just a quick question. You had talked about an educational issue regarding that, didn't you? Yep. We're we got an email from you about that. You're going we're to talk, talk about, about it at Tritown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. So okay. I, I, does anybody have anything else they want to say, or should we uh, call for a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.